What's up, Face Off Fanatics? Happy Friday. We're back at it. Um, hopefully everybody enjoyed the full Face Off highlights from last week. If you haven't checked it out yet, head over to the uh, Face Off Zone YouTube channel. Check it out. Watch some of the big D1 Face Off matchups that went down last weekend. Uh, certainly the ones that we talked about didn't disappoint. But we got some big ones coming up this weekend that I wanted to hop back on here and, and talk about. So uh, I'm going to highlight six games in particular I think you should keep your eyes on. Uh, Maryland versus Notre Dame, Princeton and Georgetown, Navy versus Lehigh, Ohio State and Cornell, Delaware and Michigan, and UNC and Denver. So let's get into it. All right, let's get into Georgetown and Princeton. Uh, last year when Georgetown and Princeton played, Princeton won 10-8. It was a pretty close game. Uh, James Riley of Georgetown, though, was 16 of 22 in the game. He was 73%. Tyler Sandoval, 6 of 19. He was 32%. Um, James Riley certainly trying to build some momentum. I mean, he did a nice job against Notre Dame last week uh, against Will Lynch. He was 60%, which is not an easy thing to do against that that uh, faceoff unit out in South Bend. So I, you know, and and you know, Princeton looking to bounce back after that Maryland game. I mean, obviously we know about the drama with the with Sandoval's stick check, and um, you know, I know, you know, I'm sure he wants to uh, come back swinging this week. So. Um, in the event that if if Sandoval does struggle, I mean they've been given some of their other guys like Colby Ginder and, and Andrew McMeek and some some faceoffs, and you know they they've showed flashes. So um, this is going to be a good game in general. I mean I, I said it last week, Georgetown needs a win desperately. So every possession is going to be huge for for them. So um, definitely keep your eyes on that game. All right, let's talk Patriot League here. We've got Navy and Lehigh coming up this this weekend. Um, Mike Sisselberger off to another great start this season. He's 62% on the on the year so far. Uh, when these two teams played last year, Lehigh won 11 to seven, and Mike Sis was 18 of 22 on the day with a goal. Pretty dominant. Um, I will say though that uh, Anthony Gobriel on Navy, who's a sophomore this season, uh, for whatever reason he didn't get to play in that game last year against Lehigh. So we don't have any tape on how the two of them uh, did against each other last year, but. Gobriel off to a pretty nice start this season. I mean, he's 60% on the year. Um, he's got the ultimate test this weekend. You know, if he wants to um, get some street cred in the in the Patriot League, he's got his opportunity this weekend. All right, up next is uh, Cornell and Ohio State. I uh, got to get tip my cap to Drew Blanchard of Ohio State. He was 58% uh, last week against Petey LaSala and UVA. He was 14 of 24. It was very impressive. Blanchard 65% on the season so far. He's having a nice year. Um, he's playing a Cornell team who is kind of struggling at the X right now. Uh, their starter, Angelo Petrakis, uh, he's 32% on the on the season so far. So um, they've gone to two other guys, Mark Silos, uh, who's showed some flashes. Um, freshman Jack Cascadden got in a little bit against Lehigh last week and did a nice job. So I would imagine if, if Petrakis struggles early, they'll go to those two immediately again. And we'll see what they can do. Um, last year, Cornell beat Ohio State 14-11. But in my opinion, um, that was one of Angelo Petrakis' best best games uh, that he played last year. I mean, he was he was um, 16 of 29. He was about 55% against Justin Anasio. Um, and it, he was a big, big reason why Cornell won last last year. So I'm curious, you know, I'm curious. Uh, we'll see if he... Uh, can can do it again, uh, but if not, I I would expect he'll be on a short leash again. So um, definitely keep your eyes on this one. Um, it, it, it's another game of you know Cornell's offense is loaded. We all know how good uh, OSU's defense is. So I'm hoping for a lot of faceoffs, but we'll see. All right, let's get into Delaware and Michigan. Uh, last year Delaware got waxed by by Michigan, 18 to eight. They lost uh, Logan Premtosh who was their starter last year, was uh, six, uh, 16 of 29. He was 55% on the day. Uh, I think this was the game that Nick Rowlett might have gotten um, might have gotten injured in. He was 2 of 8. Justin Weedfeld came in, uh, actually did a pretty nice job. He was 11 of 21 with a goal, so he was about 52%. Um, but Delaware, I, I, I do predict this game will be a lot closer this year. Delaware is pretty loaded. Got to give a shout out to Roland Hockenberry, uh, who's quietly having a nice season. He struggled a little bit against Villanova last week, but um, he, he's 62% on the season so far. So he's uh, 
he's you know he was primarily their their Delaware's backup last year, but he's been getting the nod. So I'm curious to kind of see how Hockenberry is going to match up against uh, Nick Rowlett and who's 60 percent on the season so far, and and Justin Wheatfeld who's 50 percent. So I mean that's a that's a very good duo that they have at Michigan. So. Um, that's going to be a game to definitely keep our eyes on. It should be high scoring and a lot of face-offs, so uh, stay tuned on that one. Let's talk about UNC and Denver real quick. Uh, if you watched UNC's last game, their starting face-off guy, Andrew Tyre, got a little banged up in that game. Uh, so I have no idea how he's doing health-wise. Um, he's going to have his hands full regardless uh, with, with Alex Stathakis who you could argue is having the best, you know, you could argue he's a first-team All-American right now, the way he's playing. Um, He's 65% on the season so far, and if you've been watching his games, I I thought he would, it would, it should, I thought it's higher than that, but he's 65%. Um, Last year when UNC and and Denver played, it was, it was a thriller, a lot of goals. uh, UNC won 17 to 16. Uh, Stathakis had a big day. He was 20 of 35 that day. He was about almost 60% beat up on Zach Tucci, their starter at the time. Um, Tyre didn't play in that game. He was hurt. So uh, they went to the freshman, Chase Mullins, who came in, and he was one under 50. He was three of eight. So we'll see. Um, If Tyre can't play, uh, they have two freshman faceoff guys on the roster, Uh, George Kalos, who's been getting some reps uh, when when, – when Tyre needs it, and then they have another freshman, Colin Hannigan, um, who, you know, between Kalos and Hannigan, two different, you know, Kalos is is certainly super, super fast. He's a little bit lighter. Kalo, uh, Hannigan's a little bit bigger. Um, he's really good in tie-ups. It could, you know, Hannigan could be a good matchup for, for a big guy like Stathakis. Um, but either or, I mean, if, if Tyre doesn't play, uh, I would expect we'll see a good amount of both those guys, and you know it, they're going to have their hands full against a guy like Stefakis. So um, we'll see how this game goes. I'm assuming there's going to be a lot of goals again, and um, definitely keep your eyes on it because it, it, it'll get very interesting, especially if Tyre doesn't play. All right, let's finish off with our game of the week here. Uh, we got Maryland and Notre Dame. Uh, Maryland, impressive win against Princeton last week. Luke Weirman did a nice job against Tyler Sandoval and, and the other uh, Princeton faceoff guys. I mean, he's 72% on the season so far. He was 75% against Notre Dame when he played them last season. Uh, he was 18 of uh, – he was 18 of 24, yeah, he was 75%. Um, they kind of used Hagstrom and Colin Hagstrom and Will Lynch, Notre Dame did last year. So we'll see. I, I mean, I'm sure Lynch will get the start and, um, you know, they're going to try to make things as physical as they can, um, on the wings. But if, if Weirman's able to win them clean, it's, it, it, you know, it, it's not going to really matter. So I know they're going to try to make it more of a, a, a street fight on the wings and, We'll see if they can do that um, because this is just – it's going to be a just an incredible game in itself. Uh, every possession is going to matter. Um, Maryland – yeah, like I said, Maryland did win last year 11-9. to nine, So we'll see what happens. I'm, I'm going to be really excited. I'll, I'll be at that game. So I'll be – I'm excited to kind of watch it live. So we'll see what happens. So, you know, that's it. That's our six games. We got a couple other – games here that I wrote down. We got Connor Calderon at BU versus Thomas Colucci at Colgate. That'll be a fun one. Zach Cole versus Hopkins. Um, those Hopkins guys, we'll see what happens there. We've got Penn and Penn State. That'll be a good game. So, you know, if I'm missing any game, let me know. Um, you know, I'm, to all my D3 and D2 guys out there, I, you know, I've been so busy with D1, but I will get into start getting into some of those uh, uh, big games coming up we have with, with that. Um And that's all I got. So listen, you know, I hope everybody has a great weekend. Um, And as always, I'll see you in the zone.